Hey guys, welcome back to the Man Cave 4301 podcast. I'm your host, Big Kev. Before we get into this episode, I just want to thank everyone that has shown me support. I'm starting to get messages come through about people that love the show and uh, and they want to hear more. And I've even had people uh, giving me suggestions of who to get on here as well, which is really awesome. And this episode is on YouTube and I've added another angle. So I've had a GoPro sitting here for a little bit and I wanted to give it a go and uh, just to give a little bit more of an angle and uh, just to change it up a bit for YouTube. Uh, up and coming, we've got uh, Sean McBride, uh, Chucky Johansson, and we've got Seth Hiley uh, from Brothers Unite. Um, they're going to come on and we're going to have a bit of a discussion, so that's going to be a really good episode. Sean's going to be doing it over Zoom or Messenger, uh, Video Messenger. So we'll see how that pans out. It should be a really good episode. I'm looking forward to doing it. Um, thank you so much once again. I won't take up too much of your time. Let's just get into this podcast. Our next guest is a chippy from the Gold Coast. Since 2011, he's been striving to help others in mental health after his stepdad took his own life. Struggling with his own mental health, him and a mate created No Mates 4x4, a social group on Facebook. Ben Lees, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, mate. Let's go back in time since um, before your uncle. Uh, sorry. Your stepdad. <laughs> stepdad. <You're laughs> I just said stepdad. <laughs> you did, mate. Just take us before that time. So you weren't sort of, it wasn't sort of something in your life to start with until uh suicide yeah or, well no suicide wasn't really um anything i'd i'd really known about I'd, i actually had someone i knew from school had taken their own life but it was years after i left and things like that so it wasn't anything that was really you weren't close into my life no i wasn't wasn't close with anyone that had taken their own life until dad so yeah yeah i think i'm i've experienced uh a couple of friends that have taken their own life but not close friends yeah so maybe a, a friend's brother or sister or yeah something to that effect i mean it, it's horrible news to hear that yeah. someone is in such a way that they think that is their only option but um being a lot younger and stuff like that when this other person had committed suicide i didn't really um you didn't have that connection no i didn't have that that connection with that person so mm. i kind of i didn't shrug it off but i went oh that's that's no good you know hope their family's okay and that was kind of the end of that yep um yeah and then yeah got the phone call about about dad doing it and the the whole world turned upside down so so how did that affect you in sort of the months afterwards? Like, it... um, the short answer, it fucked me. It really did. It, um, I mean, I, I got the phone call. I'd only spoken to him not even 24 hours earlier and we were planning on um, booking him flights to come up just to get away because he lived in Victoria. Um, yeah, getting him flights to come up. And uh, and just sort of get away from all the bullshit that he was he was struggling with back home, and um, getting him to come up and spend Christmas with us and just chill out and get his head right, and and he was all for it. Um, and then that was at sort of ten o'clock in the morning and seven o'clock in the morning. And the next morning, I got the phone call to say that he'd been he'd been found in his car, and he was gone. So. Um, straight away off that phone call just because of what was going on within the family and things like that i jumped straight on to um man of the house kind of duties it was it was my job to get everyone sorted out so um i then rang my brother and got him to go and pick up my sister and uh, got all that organized and then I, I rang my wife and i left work and went home from work and um, got on an aeroplane and went down to Victoria and jumped straight into um, organising his sort of his affairs and 
funerals and final bills and everyone else you got to ring when someone passes away um so i didn't really take five minutes to let it sink in um and he actually had a, a good mate of his contacted me and, and offered to do his do his funeral he was a funeral director so um his funeral was done by a good friend uh he dad didn't actually want a funeral but my wife and I borrowed some money off her parents and paid for a funeral anyway because um, funeral's not really for the person who's passed, I don't think. I think it's more closure for the people who are going to miss them. And uh, as a man who thought he had no one around him or he, he wasn't a very well-liked man, we told everyone it was a closed family-only funeral and just over 300 people still showed up. Wow. So you just never know, do you? That's right. So um, if he thought he had no friends, well, he had rocks in his head. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I kind of just jumped straight into organisation mode, and and my wife was amazing. She she held me together, and she actually wrote Dad's eulogy um, on the way to the funeral. Wow. While we were driving down. Um, yeah. So. Um, so you, you guys knew that there was <coughs> issues there. And, well, I mean, obviously the, the trip up was for him to have a break, to get away and yeah. sort of regroup. Yeah, he was, um, he was kind of, he was, um, I don't know, if, I, I guess you'd call it bullied. He was, he was getting bullied a bit at work from a manager. Um, or bully, I think bullied is the right way of putting it. Um, he was kind of just getting targeted. So if something went wrong, Andy got blamed. Yep. Dad got blamed. No, he did it. Or he was operating that machine on the day. It's his fault. Um, so there was that. And then there was there was um, relationship issues between him and him and mum. And, um, I mean, there, there's four different stories when it comes to that. Um, I know what he's told me. I know what mum's told me. And I know what my sister told me from living in the, in the home while the issues were happening. There wasn't violence or anything like that. They just... I think they'd just grown apart and um, dad didn't really want that to happen. He'd given sort of 20 plus years of his, his life to this relationship and it, it was falling apart. So that I think that um, that rocked him a fair bit. Mm, 20 years is a lot to, yeah, to lose. Yeah. And um, I mean, as much as some of my family now think that other parts of the family blame my mum, um, I don't personally. Um, relationships fall apart. It's horrible. It's a um, two-way street, too. That's right. You know? um, they, they, people grow apart, and it, it does happen. I, I'm lucky enough. I haven't had it happen to me. Um, I'm happily married. I don't think my wife wants to leave. <laughs> she hasn't <laughs> said anything. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, I haven't been through that. So, but I do know lots of people that have. And it, clearly it happens. So I don't have any resentment towards my mum for their marriage not working or any blame towards her for, for dad committing suicide. At the end of the day, no one held a gun to his head and said, you have to kill yourself. Yeah. Um, he made that decision. He set it up and, um, and he committed suicide. No one made him do it. Um, it was the the black dog. It was depression. It was that voice that barks inside your head. Um, that's what got him. So, um, yeah, it sort of, it rocked the entire family. Um, you know, us kids, his, his family. So, um, like his, his mum, his brothers and sisters, everyone were just, blown away by it he just wasn't um not that you can really pick the the type so to speak that would commit suicide but if you were gonna it, he just wasn't on that list he was so against it and he had that mentality that was the coward's way out it was the weak way out um and that's kind of where i went after he committed suicide i went to 
anger and resentment towards him um because you start to think well you know in in your suicide note you say you love all your kids and stuff why didn't you hang around why didn't you stay Mm. um but then you follow your own path of depression and you end up in the same spot where you've got your suicide planned um and you realize pretty quick that's not at all what's on your mind so yeah there is you know the argument when you're feeling down you know think of your kids think of this think of that they already have they already are and they still think that it's the best option it to to use a tacky <clears throat> metaphor it's like the black dogs yelling louder than your thoughts of yes. of reason absolutely yeah. and it drowns it out i'm um i i speak to to quite a few people i get sort of on average through no mates four by four i get probably 60 messages a week um of people that are struggling and one thing because people that are going through depression you know you're not depressed every day that's the thing you'll, you'll get it in bouts well that's my experience anyway you get it in bouts it might be two or three days it might be a week it might be two weeks and then you get a couple of days that you're like oh i'm better it's those days that I try and convince people. That's when you need to try and retrain your thoughts. Um, you got all these people that that um, the line. Oh, just just think about something happy. Just stop being so negative. Just cheer up. Just snap out of it. Just fuck off. Yeah. Like it doesn't work like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, That's the best way I've heard it. Heard it put. Simple as that. Just, but. I I also push the the positive thinking kind of mantra and the, the idea of positive thinking. My theory on positive thinking is it, it doesn't make the negative shit go away and it doesn't... There's heaps of people out there and belief systems that go with if you think it, um, it'll come, yeah. it'll happen. There's one part they never tell you about and it takes action. You can think it, you can think it all day long, but if you don't do anything about it, it's not going to happen. Mm. I think you mix that with the positive thinking idea. So you got a motorbike, a, a black motorbike. You'll ride up and down the road all day and you'll see 50 black motorbikes. You won't see one red one. You buy a red motorbike, you'll see 400 red motorbikes. You focus, your brain will focus on what you think about. So if your constant thoughts are negative, which is what depression does to you, you'll focus on the negative shit. So on your good days, you've got to work really hard and it's it's not easy. And this is where society's kind of broken. Lots of people are lazy. They want the easy way. They want someone else to fix it. It doesn't work. You've got to work on yourself. On your good days, I think you need to focus on those positive things that you have your kids your wife your husband your your dog the fact you didn't shit the bed last night that's a bonus <laughs> like find something positive and focus on it and it'll breed the positivity itself in your head and then on your shit days you've got a little bit more armor a little bit more ammunition to fight that black dog and your subconscious will do it on your behalf. And then you'll notice your two good days and your five shit days, you end up with four shit days and three good days. And then you can stretch it. You end up with four and four. And you just slowly expand on that. But you've got to work on it. And that's where all these life coaches and everyone like that, they've got the Hey, give me 20 bucks and I'll give you the answer to everything. Yeah. Every, every Everyone's answer is different. Yeah. You know, because circumstances are different. That's they right. They can't give a, a blanket, Yeah. you know, uh, cure for this sort of but stuff. But also, the answer is work. It's, it's going to take work. You've got to work on yourself. So, and, and when you are depressed and when you are in your lowest point, you don't want to. You just want to curl up in the corner and mm. you want the world to forget you're there. So when you're having your good days, that's when you've got to work on yourself. 
don't try and work on yourself while you're in the hole. You yeah, fight it. Because if you're focusing more than on what's in the hole, then I mean those thoughts are going to take over and that's right. And drain it just, out the it good just ones. breeds. It just breeds more of whatever you're thinking of. So again, the, the hocus pocus around your thoughts become things or your worry becomes your wish. It it doesn't do it magically, but your subconscious will make events happen, and you won't realise it. So if you're constantly focused on the shit bits, that's all you're going to focus on. Focusing on the good bits doesn't make the shit bits go away, just makes you stop thinking so much about them and you start to notice some good stuff and then you notice some more good stuff. And eventually you still notice the shit bits but they don't affect you like they used to. That's that's kind of been the way I dug through it anyway. I ended up... I, I battled depression and I got put on medication for it but um, I don't think medication's the cure for anything really um, but medication I still advocate for people to go to the doctor and get medicated if they are depressed because it doesn't again it doesn't make the problems go away but it might take your suicide level from above your head down a couple of notches and gives you a couple more steps to and work it gives on you yourself. room to breathe and and, right. and and time to think, yeah, uh, you know, straight, yes, and, and get on the right path. That's right. And because I mean, obviously, when you're depressed and you're at that stage, your mind is so clouded yep. that those, you know, those coping mechanisms won't get through properly, or the the thoughts of getting better won't get uh, get through. Yeah. So having that medication will just bring you down a couple of levels, and then. Yeah you're able to think clearer and actually start to process stuff better. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, there, there are a, a lot of medications out there that they can sort of zombify you and you, you end up on a dosage so high, um, you kind of just stop giving a shit about anything mm. and you think, sick, I don't care. But What quality of life is that? That's It's a good place to be if you are suicidal because it brings you well away from that. But um, I think you need to then start looking and working on the root cause of why you're depressed. Um, and again, there's a hundred different treatments or treatment options. And depending on who you talk to, which one's the best. You go to a shrink, you go to the doctor, you go to the psych ward, you can go and see Buddha. You can join a religion or take up religion or whatever you do with religion mm. um <laughs> i've got no idea <laughs> um but whatever works for you mm. you know i went and saw a lady who's a, uh, i think she calls herself a spiritual guide or a soul guide and she's all about the energies that a person puts out everyone's an energy force and i mean some of the stuff that she teaches helped me and i'm not at in any way shape or form from nimbin or yeah. any of that hippie sort of stuff but yeah it worked and but i also saw a shrink and i also got medicated i tried four different types of treatment and they all worked in their own way yeah it's like saying to someone if you go to a pizza shop and you you get your pizza and it's shit you don't stop eating pizza you just go and get pizza from somewhere else yeah you get a different one yeah so exactly. That, that's a that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You so win. Just, uh, and that's why I I advocate still, even though I've copped a little bit of slack actually, for saying, go and get medicated, go and get uh, medically diagnosed, self diagnosing yourself do with not, depression. Please do not Google. Don't, don't do that. Your symptoms. Don't do that. <laughs> um, self diagnosis. It. I don't know who it is, but it's, it was years ago. So there's a quote, a quote floating around by someone. Before you diagnose yourself with depression, first check you're not surrounded by assholes. Because it might just be your surroundings. It's, mm. not, it's not the chemical imbalance that is clinical depression. It might be the circumstances you live in. So then you can just go and change a couple of things in your life. And all of a sudden you're not depressed anymore. Clinical depression is different. You need to go and get medically diagnosed with that. 
then you can get the help you need. Do you think that medical diagnosis is uh, too easily given? Um, like like for, for medication <clears throat> purposes, like they're not telling you to... Because, um, I mean, I've spoken to someone before and he said he went to the doctor and they prescribed him medication. They did not ask why he was depressed, where it stemmed from, didn't ask him any questions like that. They just medicated him. Yeah, wow. Well, um, and he actually come to me and he said that. He said, uh, they didn't ask me any of these questions. They don't know why I'm depressed, but they just gave me medication and sent me on my way. That's crazy. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to think that if that got reported to the right people, that doctor may or not may or may not be a doctor anymore. Mm. Um, personally, I've got a fantastic GP. He's great. Um, and he followed kind of the, the rule book or whatever you call it. And you do this this sort of psych assessment. I think it's 10 questions and you get scored out of 38. I should know the name of it because I'm currently studying mental health. <laughs> and I just did an assignment on it, but I've forgotten. Um, it's the beer. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Good old Iron Jack. <laughs> That's a plug. You can sponsor me if you want. Um, or me. <laughs> <laughs> any, any sponsor will do. And... Um, he he made me do this this test and you get scored out of 38 and i think if you if you're above a certain number then it's bad news um and you you're in this scale and that's what justifies him either putting you on medication or putting you in a funny jacket um so i think maybe some doctors aren't equipped to to make the diagnosis when it comes to mental health mm. i mean mental health is i don't i don't even know how you can study it um because everyone is different every single person on the face of this planet is completely different to the one next to them so to put everyone in this this basket that oh, he's sad he must be depressed give him some pills mm. um there's thousands of antidepressant pills out there and not the one I take might not work for you. No, exactly. Um, so I'm not really sure how the medical system works when it comes to making that judgment. And as for old mate going there and saying, hey, I'm feeling pretty shit, what should I do? And then just getting drugged up. That's not really the right... I'd be chasing up a second opinion because yeah. uh, that's really... If, if you were sort of suicidal and stuff like that, that's not the doctor you want to go and see. No. Um, and it kind of takes a lot of faith away from the medical system. Um, I think it is, with a, with a few doctors, it might be like an, an easy thing for them. Oh, okay, yeah, you, you've got anxiety. Take this. Bye. Hmm. The thing is with mental health, it's not a cold. It's not a flu. It's not, No. you know, it, it, it's... It's so much greater than that. Like it's yeah, and that's where someone's I, mind they're playing with. There, that's right. I, I, that's where I don't think medication is the cure. No, but it's a good tool. It's a good tool. Um, I don't know if you saw it, but I made a video on No Mates about the nail. So everyone's got this goal, a goal, whatever goal. You can stand there and think all day long and pray and hope and dream that your goal is going to happen. But unless you get the right tool and the right support and a little bit of effort, nothing will happen. Right, you could bash it with a portable speaker all day and you won't get anywhere. That's right, yeah. So I, I made the video on No Mates and I, I basically said, I my goal is I want to put this nail in that hole. Yep. I can stand there and hold it there. It's not going to go in, but if I get the right tool and put a bit of effort in, it goes in. So now that tool can be medication, it can be support, it can be psychiatric help, Counseling. it can be anything, as long as it's a tool. Four-wheel driving. Four-wheel driving and camping, getting out. Yeah. Instead of sitting in the corner, get out. Go and do something. You know, one of the, the best uh, natural antidepressants is exercise. Get out in the fresh air and exercise. Now, 
the the peak of fitness that I am. I wasn't going to say anything. I I clearly don't take that antidepressant. Yeah. <laughs> but neither. No, no, it's not the right tool for me. No, it doesn't work for me. Um, but it it is getting out and and doing something will help as much as being medicated. And there's been numerous studies that prove that. So, well, I mean. If you're doing something that you love, yeah, like I mean, it's going to help. Yeah, okay, it's going to make you feel good about yourself. So the more that you get to do that, yeah, I mean, the better state of mind that you're going to be in, aren't you? Absolutely. So, I mean, we've, we've all got a hobby. Some, uh, unfortunately, some people's hobbies is sitting on Facebook trolling people. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. you know, um, we'll go into that later. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, I, I went camping last night. We were talking before. <laughs> Yeah, I, went, I tried to go camping last night, but um, Top effort, mate. Top I gave effort. up because, oh my God, the, 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 the situation was dire. Yeah. Yeah, nothing lined up for me, so <laughs> I was happier to come home and have a shower <laughs> after a very long night. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that's a good camping story. I like that one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. So. Yeah. yeah it doesn't out. make me look good in like a survival group or something like that, you know. <laughs> no, oh, you can't deal with a bit of sweat and, you should, uh, and, and bugs. <laughs> talk talk to Sean McBride. He uh he teaches survival. Yeah, well actually, you know, I was story. gonna actually bring up that we, we actually met at one of the Mammoth Hunter meetings. Yeah, Mammoth Hunters Club, yeah. Uh, yeah, and yep. uh with Sean McBride and uh, actually Sean's gonna be on next weekend. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's going to... Well, he, we're going to do it over the computer, but I've got another a couple of mates coming in. I've got Seth from Brothers Unite coming oh, in. Oh, yeah, cool. Yep. And uh, my mate Chucky, uh, my old my ex-boss. Yep. And uh, I'll, I'll say he's pretty level-headed. If he's listening to this, you're really not, mate, but um, I'll, <laughs> I'll just say that you are. Uh, and we're going to have a bit of a discussion. I'm not exactly sure what the topic's going to be, but it's going to be around ment- mental health and yeah, all that cool. sort of stuff. So, yep. um, yeah, no, Sean's good. He, he's good for a yarn. Yeah, so uh, he's he's um he's had one hell of a life that bloke. That hasn't guy, he? yeah, he's done everything. Yeah, yeah, and still trying. Yeah, still yeah, trying to do more. Insane, it's crazy. Yeah, he's he's um. I went. An I went and did guy. a um, my my first ever time in front of a speaker. I went and did a radio interview with him last week. I tried to listen to that, but I couldn't find which one it was because a, a whole heap of them. Come, I'll, I'll get you to. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. flick you the link. Yeah, to, to our part. Yeah, do that. Um, but yeah, we. He he invited me along, um, just to talk about my my thoughts on the Mammoth Hunters Club and the, and the idea behind it, which yep. I, I think is fantastic. The whole um, what is it? Purpose, tribe, and adventure mm. for blokes, especially. Um, it's kind of inbuilt into us, and when you take it's one in DNA, yeah, one or all three of those things away, where you just go to work, bash nails in a wall. Go home, sleep, and do get it up, again tomorrow. Yeah, do it all again the next day. It, that's probably what's eating half the men in this world. I think mm. you, you just got nothing outside of doing that. Yeah. So, and I think you know, I, I think that today, just living conditions. That's all that they allow for is yeah. just for the, for the for people to go out, work their asses to the bone, come home, sleep, and do it the next day. Yeah. Just to keep it, you know, the world turning. Yeah. And it's bullshit. Yeah. Well, I still, I mean, it might be another podcast, but uh, I still think slavery's not dead. Mm. That's going to, that's going to raise some eyebrows, but. Uh, no, it's not. But it's, it's kind of, we're, we're still a slave to a system, but now we pay our own way mm. and we don't get bashed. Yep. So, um, and that's, that's got to add to the Because we're just mental. working for the big giants anyway. Yeah. You, so. You, um. The, the working class does keep economies afloat. At mm. the end of the day, we're the ones that spend the money in the pubs, um, in the grocery stores. We're, we're the ones buying houses, everything like that. We're, the working class are the ones keeping the country afloat. Mm. And if we stop working, everything falls. Yeah. So treat us right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> Oh, there will be an uprising. Oh, we're not going to go into that. <laughs> another <laughs> podcast. Yeah, another no, podcast. Yeah, that's a whole new blueprint. We'll, we'll get we'll get um we'll get Sean Barry in for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, 
took up three hours of my time on his podcast. <laughs> it was good. Oh, no. It was so good. Yeah, no, Sean, you're welcome at any time, mate. <laughs> we we could talk some bullshit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was a two two part, two part podcast. It was yeah. one of the one and so far only. Yeah. See how this one pans out. Yeah, but uh, I wanted to go back. Um, your for your time um, after your your stepdad, like you said, you went straight into uh, sort of father of house mode, and didn't have a lot of time to process. Yeah, uh, what had happened there? So, how did that affect you later on after e- everything had sort of calmed down? How did that sort of affect you? Um, did I, that stem into your depression, or were you already sort of going through stuff at the, the time? The more I learn about depression, I think I've struggled with depression for a, a lot of years, even before um, that. But wasn't anything bad enough where I wanted to take my own life. Um, <clears throat> um, I, I think it, I, I spiraled pretty hard into my own depression. Um, and when I did that, I, I, there was, there was, there was quite a bit, there was like a four year term there where we, where there was some sort of arguments over dad's will. Now there wasn't anything big in the will but some people disagreed with how he wrote it um, and tried to fight it so me being the executor I just fought to make sure that the will was obeyed um, now the will wasn't written that I got all the money and everyone got nothing else it was written so pretty much everyone got an equal share mm. um, but there was one person in particular that didn't think that was fair um so i fought tooth and nail for about four years back and forth emails with superannuation companies and lawyers and garbage so i still didn't really take my foot off the off the throttle kind of thing i i I didn't notice my own downturn into depression and um then i was working within the um the EBA sort of construction industry, so the unionised um, construction side of things, and uh, and I was getting sort of the same treatment Dad was getting from his. Mine wasn't really from a boss; it was from like a group of work colleagues where I was getting targeted. I'd get blamed for all the fuck ups, um, and that that sort of made it worse. And that that made me question myself as a tradesman and all kinds of stuff. Um, Having heard your your father go through that, yeah, did you start to sort of pick up the signs yourself? No, no it or wasn't until sort of just... after. And uh, I actually, my wife doesn't know this bit, but I, I um, I had my suicide planned for a Monday morning. I was going to go to work before everyone else and hang myself in the smoko shed, so that these fuckers that kept picking on me were the ones to find me. Um, but one of the turning points was I went to an event, a boxing event, and it was kind of like my, in my head, it was my final hoorah. It was go out and get a few sherbets in with the boys, watch the boxing, go home and just chill out for the day. And then Monday was it. Um, and I, there's a man called Sam Webb who is one of the co-founders for Living, the guys who penned the the slogan, it ain't weak to speak. And he got up in the ring and did a speech about what Living's all about and the ain't weak to speak thing. And um, it, I, was, I was blind. I was out of my mind drunk. And it was like someone hit me with a brick. And I just went, holy shit, what are you doing? What are you thinking? And that was when I woke up and, go, and sort of went, this is what was happening to Dad. Wow. It was it was that, hell, that night. So I sort of threw the plan out for Monday morning. I threw that in the bin and um, 
just went to work as normal. But I stopped um, stopped kind of pussyfooting around these people because what I found was there was there's a lot of um, sort of politics where like they they would the, a lot of those boys. This isn't an un, unpopular opinion within that industry, but culture in, in the. It, I was in the glazing side of things, so we were fitting windows to high-rise buildings. Um, what I found in that game was there's a lot of guys that are really good at what they do, but there's also a lot of guys that get paid the same as the guys that are good at what they do, that aren't very good at what they do. And they're the ones that clan together and try and get you sacked before they get sacked. They'd stab their own mum to keep their job. Right. Um, that's my opinion. And probably an unpopular one, and I'll get some messages over it, but eat shit. <coughs> um, <laughs> it's great. I just, uh, I, I stopped sort of <laughs> kissing ass yeah. to keep these guys on side. I, I just had this epiphany that weekend that these guys aren't my friends. And I started going to work with this attitude that I'm here to make money, not friends. Yeah, I got I got enough friends. I don't need you clowns. And that um. That upset quite a few of them because what they were doing and what they were saying wasn't pissing me off anymore. I just tell them, eat a dick and get on with my day, and I go home. And love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I and I get where you're coming from as well. There's a certain point where uh, I've been in the same situation where. You know, you're working with people that uh, that that try to ruin it for everyone, mm. and as soon as you speak up, you're the asshole in their eyes. And I'm just like, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's not the case, mate. And if if you want to think that way, you can think that way, but I'm not going to be quiet anymore. Yeah, well, I even had a boss actually. It was the last company I worked for in the in the EBA game, and and I'd told him quite a few times. Um in not a very polite way to stop talking to me the way that you talk to me. I'm not you, I'm not a dog. If I was a dog, I'd bite you. Yeah. Don't talk to people like that. Well, he got reported for bullying, for talking to people poorly and stuff like that. And when I got asked about it, the um, the delegate came and said, oh, what do you think? Does, is he a bully? I went, oh, I wouldn't say bully. He's a bit of a dick, but he's not a bully. Um, bullies have got to be intimidating. He's not intimidating. He's just a wanker. Um, someone within that company saw me talking to the, the delegate and then when it got brought to the boss's attention that he'd been reported for bullying, apparently I was the one that reported him. Oh, okay. So next thing I get the punt three weeks before Christmas. Of course. Which <clears throat> was a blessing in disguise. Um, my son was, I think, nine months old. And I had long service, so I pulled my long service and I took 18 weeks off work and I was a stay-at-home dad and I hung out with my son. So Don't get much better than that. Getting sacked was the best. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude, see ya. So going to this boxing match ended up being your saving grace. What what was going to be absolutely. your your end game was your saving grace? Yeah, absolutely. That's unreal, man. That's that's cathartic as fuck. Yeah. That's so cool. And I, Yeah, I, I actually... Quite a few years later, I, I still slipped into depression and and sort of fought pretty hard to to not commit suicide. But um, I reached out to Sam Webb and said, "Man, what you guys do is awesome. Um, how can I get behind it? You know." And I mean, they they they're a non-for-profit organisation, so um, they excuse me, they they sell shirts and hats and stickers and stuff with the living logo on it and every cent you spend with them goes to they run um educational programs so they go to schools they go to workplaces they go they've been to the mines they, they go all over the place and do this program called living well and it's basically uh teaches you i haven't done the program myself but as far as i know it teaches you how to spot a mate if he's struggling. It also teaches you what to do if someone does reach out to you a little bit. Obviously, there's there's no 
right or wrong answer. Um, but it teaches you stuff that people just don't know. Mm. And that's one of the biggest things. Like we've got the message out there pretty well that it doesn't make you weak to speak up if you're struggling. But now we've got this huge problem that people go and speak, like you go and speak to your mate and say, hey, man, I'm really struggling. I'm thinking about, you know, going out the back with the shotgun. Your mate shits himself. He doesn't know what to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, They're not prepared for that kind that's of... That's right. A, you Pat know. you on the back. Oh, don't do that, mate. And then they go. Yeah. It's not. Or they just mate... shit themselves and go, oh, look, I don't know, man. And then they just block you off. That's right. Completely. And they just cut you out. Because they've got no idea. It scares that, the shit out of them, that's like right. you said. So now Livin is doing this whole education thing to not only teach you that it's okay to speak up, but what the fuck do I do when someone speaks up? Yeah. So, yeah, and I've reached out to Sam and um, and Casey Lyons. He's another, he's the CEO. Um and quite a few times, I, I've gone every four drive event that I go to. My, the bonnet of my Ute is one big living logo. Yep. And the whole point is to get the message out there. And when people ask me about it, that's the whole point. It's a conversation thing. People talk, um, and get behind it. So that's pretty much where No Mates um, comes into it. I just. No mates kind of took on its own identity. My whole point was just to try and get behind living, but I wanted to do something that I was passionate about as well, which mm. is forward driving and camping. Well, there's no time like the present to get into it. So you tell us about No Mates Four by Four, how it started. Yeah. Um, all right. So No Mates Four by Four. On the closed group, there's actually a two-part video on on how it started. So the name No Mates 4x4 actually comes from bullying, funnily enough. Really good mate of mine, my best mate. He was the first one out of all of us to get a four drive. Um, and we were, I don't know, 17, 18, something like that. None of us had a four drive. So he actually used to tag along with his older sister who was in a four drive club. And they'd go around on trips and stuff like that. And there was one guy in there, I don't, he's older. I don't know how old. But he kind of took a disliking to my mate just because he was like the third wheel. Um, and one day someone said, you know, you should, shouldn't be so rude to him, you know. Maybe one day he'll run his own four-wheel drive club and you might want to join. And he made this comment, what's he going to call it? No mates, four by four. And we were sitting around, we used to have poker night every Thursday night, sit around thinking we're heroes, smoke cigars and drink whiskey. <laughs> And uh, and think we're big tough shit. Well, you got a beard, so yeah. Well, it's taken me until I was thirty to grow it. But you, know. um, you hit puberty; <clears throat> it's the main thing. Yeah, at twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> and but you know, everyone was sort of a handful of the other boys had wandered off, and and my mate turned around and said, "Man, this dude said this thing about no mates four by four, and it's kind of pissed me off. You know, like I don't know what to do." I'm like. Oh, do it tell him tell him to eat shit you know um <laughs> that seems to be a common yeah thing I, that you tell people to do I just, yeah eat shit eat a dick like fuck off yeah if you don't like it don't be around it simple as that like <laughs> yeah. change the channel that's right same as people that get offended by shit on Facebook. Yeah. Well, you've got a finger, just keep scrolling. Yeah, you've done it all day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why, 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 why was do you it so have hard? Because it to offended do it this you, you've got to click on it and <laughs> type, you're an asshole. Don't, yeah, yeah, okay, good for you. Um, so I made the suggestion to get a shit ton of stickers made up that said, no mates 4x4. Four four. And um, being apprentices, couldn't really afford to do that. But over the next few weeks, I got a few made up. And um, I said to him, next time you go to four drive, mate, just walk around, slap one on everyone's car except for old buds. Don't give him one. Give everyone else a sticker. That never really eventuated. My mate ended up with one on his truck. And it's a fucking great idea. I just thought, you know, it's a bit of a, you know, kiss my ass kind of thing to yeah. old bud. And then um, a few years later, I got a four drive. Another mate's got four drives. So we just stuck all the no mates four wheel drive stickers on the utes then and um it was only 
oh, when was it? I think 2016, 2017. Uh, me and Jake, the the other founder of No Mates 4x4, we we were admining for another four drive adventure page, and we went on a like an awareness run. I had it ain't weak to speak stickers all over my ute. He had them all over his four drive. And we went down to Cessnock in New South Wales. There was a big um, enduro motorbike event down there. So it's only 900 k's, apparently 950 k's or something from Toowoomba to Cessnock. It took us three and a half thousand k's to get there and nine days. So we just weaved through the bush, just spreading awareness that it ain't weak to speak. It was a pretty epic sort of- That sounds freaking amazing. It was cool. It was, it was really cool. Um, and Jake and myself, we'd never been away together or anything like that. So it kind of really concreted the friendship. Yeah. Uh, we got to know each other pretty well. You sit around the campfire and suck tubes all night. Some shit gets Blake said. said tubes. Yeah. Stubbies. <laughs> Stubbies. Um, and yeah, you, you get to know each other pretty well. And I got talking to him about no mates and about dad's suicide and about why I'm passionate about, you know, week to speak message. And he goes, you know what? The page that we're admin and for isn't really heading in that direction. It's it's aimed at something else. Why don't we kick our own off? And I'm a bit. I'm. My mates that listen to this, they're going to laugh that I'm going to admit that I'm a bit of a procrastinator. I've got a brain full of fantastic ideas, but I never do shit about it. So I went, yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. We'll sit on it for a while. I just want to set a few things up first. <laughs> and those few things never happen. Of course. So then three or four days later, I get this invite on Facebook. Come join No Mates 4x4. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? Jake had kicked the page off. He's like, no, no, I wasn't waiting for you. We're doing it. Okay. So we started off just inviting friends and stuff. We ended up, I don't know, we had 50 members. Told everyone what it was all about. And then... Um, they invited some friends as Facebook groups happen, you know, invite your mates. And then we got a few people like bagging out the name, why no mates, you know that shit. User idiots, blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, there's the door, mate, whatever. Mm. Um, and the question got asked more and more and more, why no mates four by four? So I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to explain it. And- um, You do your own two part series on- <laughs> So yeah, I did. So I started out with the whole, um, you know, mate got bullied, no mates four by four, poker game. Um, and then I went into, in the second part, I went into my dad's suicide and how that affected me and how, you know, you wake up one day and, and your hero, your dad, everyone's dad's on a pedestal. He is Superman. My dad's way tougher than your dad. Schoolyard stuff. It's, it's just how it is, you know. <laughs> And mine was gone. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do. So that video there didn't go didn't go viral because it's a closed group. We keep it a closed group because of the stuff people share. Some of the things people share, you you just don't want it shared outside of that area. So we keep it a closed group. Mm. But almost overnight, we went from about 200 members to 1,200, then to 1,500. Now just a, just over 1,700 in the closed group alone. Um, and because of the closed group, I don't allow um, sort of company advertising or for sale. It's not a for sale thing. It's any of that sort of stuff. Um, we copped a little bit of, not backlash, but sort of people sulking because, oh, I want to talk about this or, you know, you run a, a I want to give you prizes to give away but you won't advertise for me. Well, that's not entirely true. Um, we still, we give people a plug if they give members stuff or give us stuff to give to members. We just don't allow people to smash our page with advertising. advertising. It's not what it's about. It's, it's not about what it's mental for. health, not that's your right. company. Like um, if you're happy to get behind it and support it, then fine. Then I'll tell everyone that you're behind it. Yeah. Sick. But it's, um, it's not there for your um, no. free advertising campaign. So... That's why I kicked off the, the No Mates 4x4 um, Instagram and also a, a, a page, not a group. And the page is linked to the Instagram and they're the, 
they're the forms of social media that I I smash out plugs for businesses that get behind us or get behind our members. I leave it out of that group. The group's not for that. So that's pretty much the story of No Mates and where it is now. It, it kind of took on its own identity from me wanting to spread the Ain't Weak to Speak message. It just took on its own thing. And um, yeah, we've ran a, ran a few sort of meet and greets and gets togethers and things like that at, at a full drive park out at Gatton, Broby Island, stuff like that. Um, and they always seem to get a pretty good turnout, so yeah. What kind of uh, issues do you get to deal with? Well, not get to deal with, but what issues do you deal with? Like, how much sort of interaction do you get from uh, from members reaching out? And and when it first kicked off, I was averaging three hundred messages a week. Wow. Um, I'm down to probably about sixty. Sixty people would reach out. They might be the same people as last week. They might not. Might be 60 new ones, but on average, it's about 60 people a week um, that message me. Um, you know, the, the issues range from losing a job um, to losing a family member to dealing with sexual abuse as a child and now my brain can't handle it or, or I'm not really sure how the brain handles it but they, they're asking what should I do because I can't deal with it I can't live with it anymore um, so there's some stuff on there that I mean clearly you don't have the answers to no so I mean that that's where the advocating for going and seeking professional help comes in and just doing the best that you I mean we talked before about uh, just before the show, like um, you're doing the best that you possibly can. I mean, you're you're not there to fix anything, but you you can do you can aid them and in, in, in giving them ideas and what to do so that they can be fixed, get fixed Absolutely. to to some extent. Like yeah. I mean, sometimes it'll never go away. I mean, something like sexual abuse will stay with someone forever. Forever. Yeah. So it's not about fixing it. You can't fix that. But yeah to give them the coping mechanisms and the tools to fix that is, is well, what they need. So you need to do your best to direct them in the right path to get them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, giving them someone that's willing to walk beside them, you, you can't fight the fight for them, but you can stand beside them and help them back up when they fall. Hmm. That's the biggest thing is being supportive, being there when, when, some people just don't know what to do. Excuse me. Another thing is, you know, you, that support is much needed. Yeah. Um, I have said this on the podcast before, but to build yourself a support network. Yeah. Because if if you rely on one person, it's taxing on them as well. Yeah. So they can get fed up with it, um, which is completely understandable because it yeah. starts to drag them down. Yeah. If it's constant. But if you've got a support network, uh, a group of people that you can confide in um, at different times, yeah. so it doesn't wear that person down, they can all share the load. Well, um, I think that's a really good thing. There's plenty of things out there that talk about if mental health was a visible disability, people would take it more seriously and, and things would get done about it. Also... The, the supporters, so someone with a, a, a physical disability, their carer can get diagnosed and can get help for um, carer's burnout or, or they, they just get worn out. The same goes for if you're just confiding and dropping all your stuff on one person when you're struggling with mental health, you can burn that person out. So, like you said, build yourself a bit of a network and and share the load. And, again, that's where I like camping. Everyone sits around the campfire. You know, you've got a dozen people drinking beers, talking crap, and then someone decides to open up. Well, there's ten people sitting around the campfire. That's ten people taking the load instead of one. Mm. And, and also, those, that ten people can have ten different 
relatable issues that might help them That's out. That's right. You know, like, I mean, support networks are the best yeah. for that reason is because you're getting so much more information from so many more sources yeah. to help your, yourself, yeah. you know, which is which is awesome. And I love the concept. The, that's the, the thing I'm sort of starting to try and push on, on nomates as well. Instead of just getting everyone to talk about the problems they're having right now, because it becomes a very dark page dark group if that happens um get some people to throw up some stuff about their little wins mm. you know um it's a fucking great idea because you got 1700 members if 10 are battling with a i don't know a breakup and one person jumps on there oh i just went through this breakup and this happened and she wouldn't let me see the kids and i was a wreck and you know this and that and then i went and did this and now i'm sort of on top of things and i'm going well well then those other people that are struggling through a similar situation can take little bits from each story mm. and go right well i haven't tried any of this yet let's have a go at that instead of just crawling up in the corner and going well you know ben told me i should try this and that hasn't worked so fuck it i quit you know what this is i'm not, i'm no good at blowing my own horn right because mm. uh, you can't but reach or? It, mainly <laughs> you didn't have to point it out but the main reason i love this podcast is that someone that's listened to it they and they hear someone saying of I'm, I'm going through this yeah they can say shit i listened to this podcast here's a guy's experience and what he did listen to this it could help yeah and well, the more stories that i've got on this podcast that can be used in, in that situation yeah fuck yeah well I was, I, I was saying to you earlier before we started i was listening i haven't finished yet but i was listening to um stacy's mm. um her podcast or her her session with you and just her outlook, session you make me sound like a shrink <laughs> you may if it works um but her outlook that you know oh this is life now yeah I've got to get on with it. I've got to yeah, make this It was happen. like, oh, I'm going to walk like, again. Says, hey, you, you know. You're 22 or 21 years old uh -huh. and you're in a wheelchair now. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't so enchalant. Like it was, yeah. I'm, but, I mean, the way she was talking, it was, it was very just matter of fact. You know, I'm actually, going to... Actually, I should get... I should try and talk my little brother into coming on here. He, um... So, my, my father remarried and, and had two daughters and a son. So my youngest brother, he had a motorbike accident five years ago and rode off the side of Springbrook Mountain. So 18 years old, he's lost the use of his right arm. He's an apprentice mechanic. Yeah. Oh, shit. Loved cars. Of course. Um, typical 18-year-old young fella out chasing women, fixing cars, drinking piss, having a blast. And spends nine months in hospital to come out and say, oh, look, the movement you got in your arm now might be the best you get, which is all but zero. Um, and I'm sure he's had a pretty solid battle with his own depression, mm. realising that, well, oh, shit, life's not going to go back to how it was. But to see him now with his, his girlfriend and they're out living by themselves and just living life. He's He's gone back and finished his apprenticeship with one arm. What? He works as a mechanic with one arm. My dad swears at a car <coughs> like he wouldn't believe with two arms. I swear I'm going to turn a key. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yours is a D-Max though, right? No. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. Don't be like that. Oh, I'm going to have so many people just unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's, he's gone and finished his apprenticeship and works as a as a fully trade qualified mechanic Fuck with off. one arm. That's incredible. And it's just insane. Get him on. I'll, I'll, get him, I'll try and get him to get in contact with you. Where does he live? Down the Gold Coast. Yeah, yeah. sweet. Yeah. All right. I'll probably Fuck see him. Fuck yeah, that'd be great. I'll see him next week. I'll have a chat with him. All right, do that. But yeah, just his story. It'd be, it, I mean, 
can't be similar to to Stacey's, but similar no. in the way that it's a life changing event. Yeah, it's completely and it's, life. And, and, and I mean that's what we're after. It might not be the same event, but it's yeah. how it's how people and how he got through it. Yeah, how people yeah. get through it and deal with it and. And that's just it. That's yeah. the more more stories you can get out there about that, then people can pick bits from each story. And that's what we do on No Mates as well. Yeah. You talk about your story, you talk about your battle, you talk about your win, you talk about coming out the other side. And everyone can take little bits from each story. So you're now going through the, the processes of uh, a degree in mental health? A uh, certificate. A certificate. Um, yeah, okay. I was a bit... I was a bit um, I was scared. I was scared of a of a full degree or a diploma. Um, so I, is, so is this so that you could you've just got a better idea of how to deal with people contacting yeah. you? It's not. Yeah. Uh, it's not a field that you want to end up in. Oh, it, look, but it, it's, it it could be to become a counsellor of some sort might suit me. Um, I'm not really sure. I'll have to go down that path, but. Um, just the fact that the the style of conversations I have with people, sometimes I am that guy that goes, well, shit, what do I say now? And we're all guilty of it. Yeah. So I thought I'll have a go at this, this course. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not, not a cheap course and it's not easy. Well, well I mean, I mean, it's a testament to you, to you because, you know, you want to understand more. And yeah. you, because you want to help more. Yeah. You're not, you're not out there for, you know, j- just I advocate this, Yeah. you know, and, and go from there and, and hope people jump on board and yeah. and sort of get free crap and, and, and do it for the wrong reasons. Well, you know, yeah, like you actually want to learn to, to help more. Oh, that's the whole point is to help people. I mean, if I was in it to make money, um, I probably could have by now. Because it is such a sensitive subject, people will throw money at it. Um, I mean, I'm 12, about 10 to 12 grand in the hole when it comes to money I've spent on no mates. Mm. You know, merchandise, shirts, stickers, stubby coolers, hats, all this kind of stuff. And then we've given it away just to get the message out there. And then we've, you know, we sell some stickers here and there. And then the profits from that go back into the kitty to buy the next order. Yep. Or... We build up to X amount and we give it to living or we give it to a charity of some sort. There is zero money that's gone back into Jake or mine's pocket. Um, And at the end of the day, I don't think something like this is something you can make a living out of. Or if you do, you shouldn't be able to sleep at night. It's not something you can charge for. You're literally just trying to help people realize that there are other options than suicide what i like about your platform is it's 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 aimed at four-wheel driving right and i mean that in itself will draw that sort of demo like the that that sort of those sort of people yeah that like four-wheel driving like and, and all that sort of stuff and that's why i like that there's many different groups out there yeah that people can try out like I mean, it could be a gaming one, like yeah. you know, people that like gaming or, yeah. or whatever the case may be. Different hobbies, different strokes for different folks. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I just think that what you guys are doing is awesome. I, I think the um, the the sort of common interest as well helps. Yeah, helps exactly. People. Yeah, you know, everyone will jump on there every now and then and throw a photo of their car up and it's bogged up to the axles. Yeah, and then you know, check out what I did on the weekend. You get a bit of a laugh and you're. Oh, you know, it was still good to get out on the weekend, even though I blew a front diff or whatever. Yeah. Um, so there's that common interest. And I think, um, you know, we mentioned the boys from Brothers Unite. I mean, they're an enormous group and a fantastic group. Um, and the the common interest there is it's a blokes group. Mm. And, and everyone sort of shares their bit and stuff like that. Now, that's not something that I could could have run so my thing was I, I didn't want to see myself lose interest in it so i picked four driving because it's something i love to do it's a niche look it's uh yeah and it's it's something i can stay interested, interested in. in because yeah. i love it 
Um, Instead of a blanket sort yeah. of thing, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, and that's fair. Yeah. Like uh, the, like you said, it's a lot to take on. Yeah. There's three of those guys just doing it, you know, a really hard job there. And we're, yeah. we're, I mean, we're, the admins and the moderators do a, a fantastic yeah, a job. Yeah, there's a bunch as, of mods as well. Yeah, yeah. like, so they've, they've got a group yeah. of people that, that deal with, like, thousands of members where you guys are a small group. Yeah. But it's still helping. Yeah. Like I mean, and that's fine. Yeah. You don't have you 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 can't help everyone. No, well that's right. And so, I, mean, I actually had a a member. The the night that he attempted suicide, messaged me and said, "You can't save everyone, Ben. Stop trying." And I sort of went, "Screw you, buddy. I'm gonna keep trying." And it's now, oh, I think thirteen, fourteen months after. And he's done a stint in um, in a mental health ward. Uh, got the help he needed. Got medicated. And completely turned his life around. Rebuilt the relationship with his wife. Wow. Has twin boys. Little champion boys. A good job. And just well, killing the, it. They had the kids after. Yeah, yeah. After, wow. After everything. Yeah. So... Um, I mean, they're they're only tiny. They're only fresh out of yeah, the oven, yeah. as far as I, I think. Um, but he's like, he's the he's the success story that I I swing back on all the time. And I'm like, you know what? When when I start to think, oh, is this really working? I go, you know what? Yeah, it is. Look at him. Yeah, he's killing it. Good job. Turning his health around. You know, getting fit again. Just killing it and a top bloke yeah just it's a just, different outlook yeah it's just, just the black dog got him by the nuts and he couldn't get away and um yeah between myself and a bunch of members on no mates just showing him that a bunch of random strangers he's never met care shit yeah that's and that and that's a lot of it too like i mean Social media is such a cesspool. Like, I mean, you, you post something up and there's always someone there to shit on it. Oh, yeah. But then everyone's quick to jump on the bandwagon of that person that's shit on it yeah. and just shit on them. Yeah. Where me personally, sometimes, if it's warranted, I'll go on there and shit on them. But yeah. a lot of the cases, you read something and it's very hard on social media to to get con the right context out of any conversation because yeah. it's just words That's on right. the screen right yeah. but some of the times it's it's like so far out there that you think maybe this person needs actual help like yeah. someone actually that actually to to make it all fancy pantsy but needs some love yeah you know and just to know that someone actually gives a fuck about them yeah and there's been a couple of times where I've done that, and not all the time, um, but they come back and say, well, actually, yeah, man, I'm fucking... I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Yeah. And it's just like, wow, you know, because, I mean, w what you see on, fa on, on social media yeah. is a reflection of that person. Yeah. If, if they're shitting on you. Yeah. So what's going on in their life for them to be so cranky about something that's not even a thing? I, I don't even think that's just isolated to social media oh definitely not I but i mean someone's I'm... being a dick to you outside of social media yeah there's yeah. a reflection there's something else going on because people don't just walk around being a dick no and if they do well they don't walk around for long mm. so well that's what i was saying on stacy's is you know how many people out there talk to people like they do on facebook yeah not many not many yeah because they know they'll get a chip on the <laughs> yeah. on the chin then you know yeah, like so yeah. so yeah i think um Social media has uh, given everyone a, a false sense of security that mm. they can say what they want without getting chopped. Yep. Um, but it's getting to that root cause of why they're like that. Yeah. And and that's what we need to yeah to figure out because everyone's going through some shit. No, that's right. You but it, also with with social media, you'll see the people that are getting on, being sort of negative and carrying on and trolling or whatever, they're doing it on posts that are um really positive or upbeat mm. you know hey guys check out what i did 
or whatever. But I think no one really posts anything on Facebook that's a negative thing. I've said it a few times. People only post their um, their highlight reel on social media. So, I mean, obviously on, say, Instagram, I pretty much only follow anything to do with four drives. So you see, you scroll through, you might see one broken axle and then you see 400 photos of a four drive on a beach mm. or a good looking chick leaning on a four drive on a beach. Yeah. And you think to yourself, automatically in your head, you're like, oh, they got the life. Mm. But then you think, oh, hang on. Yeah, actually, Casey Meredith, when uh, Madman Brad was on, uh, bought that same thing up. Yeah. He said, you know, you look at these people on Instagram and they're all beautiful and, and yeah. whatnot. They, like you said, the highlight reel and then yeah. behind the scenes are just miserable, sad people. Yeah. Yeah. So. Either that or to, like, my my social media is a bunch of photos of the BT50 all stick it up on beaches and on four drive tracks and stuff like that. But I don't post the six weeks of work and 10 hour days mm. to get enough coin up to go on the weekend trip. Yeah. And I people just, think, oh, yeah. You, oh, like this you said, guy's you, got the life. Yeah. Look at him. Yep. Think, yep. They don't see the work that's gone it's behind the scenes. six weeks of busting your gut. Yeah. Or, you know, even um, uh, the, there's guys that own businesses in the four-wheel drive industry, um, and they they post, you know, videos and, and Instagram videos and Instagram Live and Facebook Live and stuff like that about, you know, look what we're doing, look what we're doing. But when you talk to them outside of their Instagram, they're up till 10, 12 o'clock at night and they're up again at 5 a.m. organising the business. And then they do a five-minute video in the middle of the day, hey, check out what we're doing, and all of a sudden everyone jumps on them going, man, I wish I had your life. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you really know what's involved in what I do? Yeah. You just see this bit. Yeah, and that's the highlight reel, and that's the bit that people. I think it it definitely um, uh, it definitely has to play on the mental health thing, because people will compare themselves exactly to other people's lives. Oh, I wish I had that guy's life. I wish I could do that. Mm. Wish I had his car. I mean, I copped it. I um. I got talking about. I get frustrated um, about people. Um, sulking about financial issues being the root of their depression it's it's not every single person on the face of this planet has financial issues whether they're a millionaire or they're a janitor one's either worried about keeping their job or one's worried about where the next million's coming from and everyone in the middle worries about finances mm. in some way so when they whinge about finances it, it frustrates me but I've I've put every spare coin that I've got into stuff for no mates, and when I do something to the BT50, put the tray on, put the canopy on, I get oh it'd be nice to be sponsored, mate. <laughs> well, I'm not sponsored by anyone. Yes, I have five or six different companies that look after every member of no mates, not just me. And it's not just me getting something and then plugging their name. Like the tray on it, I think I got a $50 discount to what anyone else would get. Um, where it gets serviced, the boys look after me. But they also, if you go in there to get your car serviced and say, oh, Benny from No Mate sent me, or it's got a No Mate sticker on it, you get looked after even better. That's what... I'm trying to build. I'm not trying to build a sponsorship where I get a bunch of cool shit for my car. Mm. Um, but that's the opinion some people seem to have. Yeah. You do something to the BT50, you take a photo. Hey, it's guys, check out what it did. mentality. And you get, oh, you know, I wish I had the money you've got. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. It's taken me like three years to save up for that, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Oh, I wish I had the money you think I've got. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah. So, and that that social media, and and the highlight reel that creates that. Mm. I think 
Yeah, because, I mean, people look at it and it, it, pl- people are... Some people play out others' fantasies. Yeah. And, and like in a, like you said, in a five, two-minute two video, you know, yeah. you see some ball of flashing cash or whatever, and it's like, oh, I wish I had cash. Yeah. You know? And then they're like, this guy has got millions of dollars because he's flashing cash and driving a Bugatti. Yeah. When in reality, he's printed the money on his on his yeah. home printer and he's gone out and, and he's hired, hired the, the car. And I mean, Shami <laughs> yeah. did a, a, a great, uh, how to look rich on Instagram. Yeah, right and on. he went to open houses <laughs> and he, and he'd like pose on the bed and, and do all this sort of, all this sort of shit. And, some of the comments were like, oh, man, you're balling and fucking shit like this. And he's just like, fucking these, you, you know. got no idea. Oh, he, just, yeah. he just like blew that whole theory straight out the window. Like, yeah, yeah. And it, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he actually stripped off in his underwear and jumped in the pool and d- dumb poses in the pool while people are walking around the house <laughs> looking at this house that's for sale. Oh, wow. It was fucking magic. It was really good, yeah. <laughs> that's funny, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah he, he played to the stereotype and, yeah. and 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 he showed you the comments saying, "No, oh, yeah, everyone thinks I'm a fucking baller now." Yeah, everyone reckons I'm loaded. See, yeah, look at me go. Fucking Jesus. Yeah, society, man. Like, I mean, run your own race. Yeah, do what you have to do for you. Don't look at anyone else and think, "Fucking, oh, I wish I was like that." Well, yeah, fucking. But that's that comes back to that. Um, everyone you know, jumps on and you've, you've got a bunch of coaches or or people offering these, these courses or these ideas or, and I've got the answer on how you can make six figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you give see me 30 them at the start bucks. of every fucking YouTube video. Yeah, just give me 30 bucks and I'll teach you the secret. The secret's action. Uh. They can give you all the secrets in the world, but if you don't do anything with it, it's worth you're not going to get anywhere. Uh. So... Yeah, and social media is probably created why this. you're broke, mate, because you're a procrastinator. Yeah. <laughs> You've got all these good ideas. I've got all these great ideas and do <laughs> shit with it. Yeah. So, uh, plenty of other people have got my ideas and made money with it. Yeah. I've, I've lost quite a few. I've, I've sat down with, with people that I know. Oh, God think, damn you, Apple. <laughs> think about, <laughs> not, not quite that much money. But, you know, you sit down with them and you start, oh, I'm thinking about doing this. And then. You think about it for six months, yeah, and then all of a sudden it pops up. Oh, guess what I'm doing? You're like, motherfucker! Yeah, <laughs> that was my idea. Yeah, oh, whatever. Good for you. Yeah, you know, I should have ran with it. Damn it! I, yeah, I, I, I've had issues like that before. Yeah, maybe well, okay, maybe one. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have many good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy fucking working. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't work hard, so. I just spend my day thinking of dumb shit. Yep, I'm on the same boat, dude. Yeah. My business partner's listening and thinking, yeah, you're right. You don't work hard, <laughs> you slack bastard. Go <laughs> <laughs> uh, give you a business a plug. Uh, business, estate maintenance and carpentry. So um, we sort of specialise in basically everything that is in a building. If it's in construction or it's been built, we can fix it. So from the kids punched a hole in the wall or throwing a ball through the window, door locks broken, to roof repairs, renovations, you name it, that's what we do. Neighbours' kids going off. It sounds like it. <laughs> He's having some fun. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. That's all right. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of what we do. We just... Um, so business partners based out at Ipswich. And um, that name again? Estate Maintenance and Carpentry. Estate Maintenance and Carpentry. Yeah. Are you on Facebook, Instagram? Yeah, there's, we've got a Facebook page. Um, not sure if we No, we haven't got the website up yet. Um, so it's just Facebook page, really. Um, How long have you been going? Uh, the business has been up for five years, I believe. Oh, Kyle, this is well established. Yeah, then. Kyle and his wife, Annette, they started it. Um, and I sort of... After I come off that that long service leave, yeah. the the blessing in disguise again. Your fired. holiday, yeah. Wish um, I had that kind of money. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Hey, so do I now. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was kind of sitting around, starting to get bored. So I rang my mate and said, "Hey, um, you've got much on." He goes, "Actually, we're just about to get flat out. Jump on board." So, yeah, 
Brilliant. Jumped on board. And so, yeah. yeah you're riding him, the wave. That's it, yeah. I mean, he he does a, a lot more than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, he, he does all the organising and, you know, runs around talking to clients and booking in jobs. I just rock up and lift heavy shit and bash stuff with a hammer. Yeah, that's yeah. what I do. Yeah, while well, you built for it. That's it. So, <laughs> Not real smart. That's I can lift, heavy, lift heavy shit. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. So, um... I can't it, even lift heavy shit, man. I've got a bad back. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I mean, it seems to be a, a good little good little system, but we're, yeah, we're, we're, we've dabbled in a few different areas. We've, we've tried to go into the industrial construction, so factories and fit-outs and stuff like that, but um, it just seems a little bit too up and down, so we'll come back to what we're geared up for, Yep. and that is the, the maintenance side of things, so... That's what we do. Creep your way in later when you got a bit more experience and well, stuff. And maybe. Or um, might even jump into something different. We don't know yet. So we'll see what happens. Awesome. But, yeah. Well, mate, it's been an absolute fucking pleasure to finally get you on. I know. We've been I talking mean, about it, it long it's been, And, and I, I say this a lot. Like, timing is is the biggest thing for this podcast is just to line up times with people. And, yeah. I mean, when was that Mammoth Hunters thing? Last year? Yeah. No, yeah. What was it last yeah. year? Yeah. What, uh, November sometime? Around November? I think, I think it was, actually. Yeah, it was yeah, around yeah. that time. It wasn't long uh, before I lost my job, I think. Yeah. yeah it, it was, it, like, it was, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been like, a, it was a few months. Yeah. And, yeah, just timing getting people in here is, uh, is a nightmare, but... Um, I'm starting to find some local folk that, like Stacey's, you know, from Redland, so it wasn't yep. too far for her to come, and Josh, and, and all that sort of stuff. And I'm, I'm extremely fucking humble to have these people come in to my home and, yeah. you know, and give their time for me. I mean, no, it, it's they, absolutely fantastic. I mean, they're, they're jumping on board because they they know what you're doing. Mm. The, the whole idea yeah. is to get the stories out there. They, yeah. they like the plan. Uh, and, and from Stacey's story, I got uh, uh, some feedback and saying, man, what you're doing is really good. And, I mean, that yep. just reinforces me because, you know, I'm, I'm my own worst critic. Yeah, yeah. So, I know the feeling, man. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, to, to get positive feedback like that is... Yeah. is absolutely amazing for me so yeah um it, it just makes me want to do more no that's it i mean it, those messages and yeah anyone listening that pulls anything from this podcast and and no mates and brothers unite and the mammoth hunters club any of them message the admin message the guys running the show yeah let them know and let them know because that that one message could be the only one they got for the day yeah and it, you know, a lot of hard, you know, and it, there's a lot of hard work that goes into this. I'm not going to say it's easy. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because after this, I'll, I'll probably watch this another two times, just yeah. getting the edits right, and you know, um, and just producing this podcast. Like, yeah. you know, it takes time, and uh, to to know that it's appreciated, just it, it drives you to do more and and do better. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, love what you're doing with the with no mates it's fantastic um i've got some stickers to put on my car yeah yeah awesome I told you bring some yes up, so. fuck yeah i think yeah. the scrubbers are gonna get uh get a bit of a makeover so yeah, yeah nice yeah yep. fucking awesome dude thank you so much and i wish you all the best in the future with with no mates and your your family and work and all that sort of stuff you're you're a top bloke and you deserve all the recognition. So oh, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. It's been a long time coming, so it's been good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, awesome, mate. Uh, ben Lees, thanks for coming on the podcast. Cheers, mate. <laughs>